Okay, you might remember from the uh, the last video, I had a bit of a problem with um, the following. Let's just sort out what that was now. So we go to the glass file and we just put that destructor in there. even suggests to me what it should put in and then it says um, don't like it so got a problem redefinition and obviously some of you probably spotted it what I've left in here is I shouldn't have put these brackets here because I'm defining it there that should fix the problem fix problem yes super anyway what we need to do now is talk about how we're going to be using this random walk function. Now I'm just going to do a little uh, little sketch out here. Now normally we do a million runs, but I'm going to do three. And normally we do 100 steps or 256 steps in pricing, but I'm going to do five. Let's say we start with an asset, it's always 100, and then it does a random, if you look at the Black-Scholes equation, what we have is we have um, S multiplied by something called phi, which is a cumulative distribution function <coughs> of a normal distribution and in, inside there we have a thing called d1 as well and then we take off another term which is k uh, e to the minus rt um, again with a phi and then multiplied by d2 I'm not going to write out what d1 and d2 are except to say that d um, D1 has a time term in it and some volatility, and D2 has a square root um, time term in it. So the key thing is this value here. Now that is a random variable. It's a cumulative distribution function of a normal distribution, i.e. think of a normal distribution and pick a point on it somewhere. And you're more likely to pick a point in the middle than you are at either end. So because it's fatter in the middle. So that's kind of what that's doing. Now, if we were to write a, um, a proper full pricing program, obviously we do, we do a good version of this, or we'd use a Mersenne Twister algorithm, but we just want to be cheap and cheerful. I have a cheap and cheerful method and a much, much quicker method for getting a value that's very, very close to this, and over 100 runs is indistinguishable. So we need a randomized variable. Why do we need a randomized variable? Because we, the only price we know with, say, five days to go on an option is today's price. Tomorrow it might go up randomly with drift and interest rates and volatility, and then it might go down. And it might go up again massively on the edge of the normal distribution. And then it might get to, uh, no, 115. 100, oh, 100, well, 125. Okay, we're doing three runs with five... To Four, I'm making four steps. So the asset price, 100. Call option, strike price, 110. Okay, so what's that worth? What's the payoff there for something that gets to 125 and the strike was 110? Well, that's worth 15, isn't it? Now, we're not going to present value any of these things. It's complicated enough as it is. Let's do our second simulation. We start at 100, go to 98, down to 97, down to, <laughs> to 54. Oh, bad day. And we crawl up there. We crawl up to 109. What's it worth? Nothing. Let's do a third run. Start at 100. Um, what do we get to next? We get to... 97, oh, bad day, looks bad again, but then it goes up, 112, 116, 115 on day four. What's that worth? It's worth five, isn't it? So 115 minus 110, it's worth five. Okay, we're not, it's a very, very simplistic model we're using today. Okay, so there's my three universes, and in those three universes, I gathered a total of $20. Actually, what I'll do, can I just do this? Keep that the same price, then I can make that six. Now what I do is I take all my pots, 
and I add them all up to come up with one super pot. So I add all those up and I get to 21. Now I did three runs. One, two, run one, run two, run three. So I take all my pots, I then divide by three, so my option is worth seven. And that's what we're going to do in the programme. Only we're going to do a million runs and we're going to do 100 steps, or 256 steps. But that's basically what we're going to do in this programme. The randomness comes from here. We've got the volatility in there, that's all in here and in here. Uh, we've got a time function in there, we've got a square root of a time function in there. You can look up on the internet, on Wikipedia, what those are, should you be so desirous. But I'm going to do this really simply. This is just to show you the kinds of things you can do. So what I shall do is I shall leave all this in comments for you to look at later. Uh, obviously, if this was a put option, uh, let's not do it. I'll quickly do what a put option would have been without drawing anything. That's worth nothing. That's worth one. That's worth nothing. So it's going to be one divided by three. It's going to be third, 0.33 of a dollar. Right. Let's get on then to this program. Now, first thing I need to do is I need to figure out how to work this uh, this phi value okay now to do that I need a random variable so I need to seed a random variable this is a very simplistic function I'm not recommending you use this uh, later on when we get to templates we might see something better than this but for now we're just going to seed something with a very simple thing just using time because time is a fairly unique thing but it will repeat and it's not very good and so on now what I'd like is a number between 0 and 1, but not quite 1. And we're going to do that here, inside this randomizing function. So let's just uh, return, because round gives you a number anywhere between 0 and rand max. Rand max could be 32,000. It could be 22 million. So what we need to do to get between 0 and 1 is to do this little bit of jiggery-pokery where I take that, that could be say 31,000 and I divide by casting rand max so I just need to put this in brackets because I'm going to add on 1.0 Now why am I adding on 1.0? Because I want this I want this never to be equal to this otherwise I could get something coming back 1 divided by you know 32,000 divided by 32,000 equals 1 I don't ever want it to do that so I want it to be 32,000 divided by 32,000 and 1 and then I will get back something just beneath 1 anyway there we go we've now got something that returns us a rand value that looks a lot like the rand in Excel which is what we need to replicate this cumulative distribution function of a normal distribution which would be extremely slow to code. Okay, now, well not slow to code, slow to execute. First thing I need to do is I need to build up the pot which is going to hold that number. So let's create a couple of numbers. So we'll do a call payoff pot. That's going to hold a 21 later on. And we'll do the same thing for the put payoff pot, which would have held 1 from earlier, divided by 3. OK, we need two loops. The first loop is the number of simulations. That could be a million or 10 million, so we need to make it a long. 
Uh, we'll start at one. Less than or equal to one million. So how many runs are we doing? And add one run each time. So what I'll do the first time, let me just check. So I shall make sure that we're only doing one simulation, just for this sake of there we are. One simulation, that's fine. Hundred hundred steps. Actually let's change this over, make it ten steps. See what we're doing. Um, so that's the first for loop. Now we're going to do the individual steps within there. So that's never going to be more than you know, a few hundred, so we can get away with a, an int there. And what we shall do is we shall say j is less than or equal to the number of steps. So get bsm steps. And then add one on to that. Super trooper. Lovely. Now we've got a loop within a loop. Outer loop is the number of simulations. Inner loop is the number of steps. Now we're going to add some other stuff in here, but uh, for the moment that, that will do. So we start every time we do some steps, we need to start with the starting asset price, which is 100. So let's just do that now. So let's get the asset price. So it should always be. With my inputs, that should be 100 every time. And I'm going to change it according to something very similar to this equation, which I'll let you look up on Wikipedia with this uh, randomised normal thing and this square root of time in here and time in here and volatilities in various places. We are going to say this. As is going to equal as times... 1 plus the growth rate, the drift rate, the general drift rate. That's going to be multiplied in the first half of the equation by the time step. Now we don't currently have the time step. Uh, what I could do here is I could say the time step is equal to um, get BSM years, divide that by get BSM steps. However, we don't want to do that calculation 256 million times, so we'll always get the same result. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that once. I'm going to do that once out here. TS and put it once there. So we only calculate that once, we don't calculate it millions and millions of times. So let's get back to my calculation. So I multiply by time step. Um, actually, it's proper name. Let's do proper name. There we go. Now, what's next? Um, now I need to move on to the second half of the equation where I've got a bit of volatility. So, get BSM vol. Now that's going to be multiplied by the square root of the time step. But again, do I want to do that calculation? If I've got a million runs and 256 steps, I'm going to have to run that 256 million times, that calculation, and that seems a bit silly. So, what I shall do is do it once. Makes a bit more sense to me. Now, I need to um, multiply that by this phi thing. Cumulative distribution function of a normal distribution. Hmm. Now, the problem with that, of course, is that if I write a proper thing to do, that's going to take ages. It's going to be really, really slow. So what I'm going to do here is use a hack. And the hack is this. 
you take 12 random variables, add them together between 0 and 1, add them together and take away 6. And that should give you something that's very close. After a few thousand runs, that will give you a very, very good approximation to phi. So let's just do that then. Uh, have I written my function? Yes, written it. So 12 of these monkeys, rn plus rn plus rn plus I'm going to go mad if I type that 12 times so and then take away 6 back so actually let's get rid of these just check the brackets looks okay we won't know until we test it but looks okay that's good that's good I think we're there oh what happened there come over here super right we've got 12 of them haven't we great now what we'll do just to, just for sanity's sake we'll just print out what ass has become now we know it will start at 100, so it should go up or down from 100 randomly. Now, if I've got my, all my fingers crossed, this should work. I can't see any red anywhere. Succeeded. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, that's good. That looks good. So we started off at 100, but we didn't print that. Gone down to 96. Then up to 99, then up to 103. The drift is generally going to take us up, but you know, so we have ended up over the line, but that big hack downwards really hurt us. Let's run it again. So, ooh, that's a bad one, isn't it? That's a bad run. Oh, that's a fantastic run. Look at that. I was, what a brilliant investor and trader I am. So, I made 40 on that payoff. Let's do a few more. Now let's just change the steps from 10 to 100. So let's, let's be more realistic. Let's see what we get now. Uh, print out a little message. Oh, what have I done wrong there? Do, 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 do. Oh, get rid of that. Is that better? We there we are. So step one hundred. So we can see that we start from one hundred, which isn't hasn't printed. Up a little bit, and eventually, after a random walk, we end up ninety. There we go. Ninety-three. Oh, come on, I'll get over a hundred. There we are. That's better. One hundred thirty-five. One hundred eight. I think I'll uh, stop there while my luck is good, and we'll keep going in the next lesson.